Hey, this is an introduction to quantitative and qualitative mapping, thematic mapping, if you will, in QGIS. This quick tutorial assumes that you know the basics of QGIS by now, so you know how to open QGIS on your computer and open data files and things like that. Um, and I'm going to jump right into it. So I have this rat sightings data that we've been playing with. And I have opened it, and in the past we've talked about how we might style this in a variety of ways. You might just change the color um, to a red, something intense like that. And all of these, all of these changes that we could make here, uh, maybe we want stars. Um, these changes happen. They modify how all of the features in the file look. And that works for some data. I think it misses the potential of a lot of data. For example, this rat sightings data, if I open the attribute table, we can see that it has some interesting data within it. Um, in particular, it has a location type, and I think that's that's potentially a useful thing to look at. And maybe that could tell us a little bit more than um, just, just showing where all the rat sightings were in the city over the summer. So, so we could do that. Um, we could select out particular types if we wanted to. We could select out all the one and two family dwellings and save that as its own shapefile and open that as a layer and then stylize that layer if we wanted to. That's definitely one way of doing it. But another way of, of doing this kind of thing where we, where we are stylizing, symbolizing a set of features based on the data we have about them is through... Um, through what's called a classified map. So we create classes for for the features, in this case, categorized. So if we go to the layer properties, style, and then instead of a single symbol, we say categorized. And in this case, I'm going to select my column, the location T that I like. And I am going to hit the classify button. So this creates classes. It creates um, it creates what is commonly referred to as a bucket. Each each of these lines being a bucket. So all of the one to two family dwellings go in this bucket and they get this color. All of the construction sites go in this bucket and get this color. Um, when we hit apply, we see uh, we see the texture of this data. We see um, one thing that pops out at me is the one to two family dwellings show up a lot in the in the outer boroughs. Um, when you have more than say five or six classes or buckets. I think it becomes very overwhelming for someone who is trying to read this map. One thing in particular is the shades of the colors start to get way too similar and kind of impossible to differentiate. So what I'm going to do is delete a bunch of buckets that I don't, that we're going to um, not stylize or not distinguish within. So I'm going to select... I'm going to try to just pull out the residential things. An SRO would count as residential, I think. So I'm deleting everything but those. And you see this empty one at the end? That's kind of a catch-all. 
or it is a catch-all. So everything that we don't specify gets this. Um, and I'm going to hit apply, and we'll see how that that changes the map a bit. It makes it a little bit less chaotic. I think we should go ahead and make it even less chaotic. So there are two ways you can do that. Uh, one is, um, I mean, you could remove more classes. Um, but say we really want these these five classes, then you'll want to go in. Um, so you can change the symbols for each of the classes by double clicking here and picking new colors. You have all the same options as you would have usually. So you can make these in particular, you can make these bigger if you think these are these need to be emphasized over the rest. Um, I'm going to leave that one alone, but what I'm going to do is with the other one to two family buildings, I'm going to pick a similar color, say. Something green, but a little darker. And then for the three plus family, I'm going to pick a, a brighter blue that's more in line with the one to two. And then similarly with the mixed use, I'll, I'll pick something a little bit darker, but along the same lines. And there are definitely more precise ways to do this. Uh, let's apply that and see. OK, that's a little bit easier to read. I am going to go into the catch-all and make it kind of gray it out a little bit. And maybe make it, maybe even make it a little transparent. Okay, so that's, I think that made it significantly easier to read. So now we can see where the three plus family buildings are and uh, well, specifically where the ones that had rat sightings were. Um, the SROs might be more, might be nicer if we could see them a little bit better. Maybe if we made them a yellow-ish color, maybe they would stand out a little bit more. I don't know how many there are. I saw a couple popped up when we did that. Um, yeah, so that's that's how you would make a categorized map. Um, often we're going to call this qualitative because we're talking about a quality of the data, not necessarily numbers, but a quality of each of these sightings is that they were sighted in a one and two family dwelling, for example. Um, Okay, so um, when you go to your um, to the print composer and you add your map to it, as we have here, the legend should also it should be smart. So in this case, the legend is smart in that it is showing us just the classes that we're styling and um, the colors for those classes. The thing we'll want to, I'm going to close out of that. The thing I noticed that I should mention, if we go back in, is that the catch-all doesn't have any label right now. So it didn't have any label on the legend. So I'm going to say other here. And now, now it will be styled and will show up in the legend. OK, so now let's take a look at quantitative data, at mapping based on the quantity of things in an area. Um, 
I've done a little bit of work before this video that will make it a little bit easier to do this. I created a file of the city council districts um, here, and I'm going to move the layers so that we can still see the rat settings on top of it. So that, that's available on the New York City Open Data site. If we open up the attribute table, though, we're going to see, OK, so the council districts each have their names, their numbers, rather. Uh, they have a length and area in here. Those aren't going to be super useful. I added these three columns. And first, we're going to look just at the count. Count, in this case, is the number of rat sightings that happened in that council district. So what if we wanted to show kind of the intensity of the rat sightings in a given place in, and give a better, so uh, try to distill all of this point information, which might be overlapping and in many cases is, try to distill that into an idea of where the rat sightings are happening more frequently. And the way you would do that is <clears throat> If you go into the properties for the city council district layer, um, up here under single symbol, instead of categorize or single symbol, we're going to use graduated. And we're going to pick count. I'm going to leave the color ramp the way it is right now. I'm going to leave everything else the way it is. And as with the categorized map, we need to cl click classify. So this created five classes for us, five buckets, whichever you prefer. Um, that is a setting here. Uh, you can definitely go lower. I wouldn't go much higher, though, mostly because it gets very hard to tell the, the colors apart as you go up. OK, so we created five classes. Um, these numbers are where the data falls within, so where the count falls in. So uh, city council districts with 200.4 to 247 uh, rat settings will get the darkest blue, and so on. So I'm going to hit apply so we can see what that means. <clears throat> And it's a little hard to see right now, so I'm going to turn off the other layer. OK, so when we look at it this way, anecdotally, I think, I think it's doing a reasonable job of telling us where most of the rat settings are happening. I feel like there are a lot in here that get hidden a little bit, right? So there are a number of things we can do about this. Um, we can go back here in the properties. And I like to leave this window on the left so I can see what happens to the map as I change it. So there are a number of things we can do. We can change the color ramp. Um, say you don't want a blue, maybe you're more into the red to purple scale. You could use that, see how that affects the map. You could definitely pick more alarming looking things, so like up to red. <clears throat> and I'll hit apply. Maybe that's more appropriate in this case. You can also invert that, but I definitely do not suggest it. In this case, sorry, you have to hit classify first. So, so what this does is it it ends up emphasizing <laughs> the places that don't have as many rat sightings. That is not a natural way of thinking about this at all, I would say. Okay, so back to the more sane way of having a color ramp. So, um, so this mode dropdown is going to do a number of things. 
the mode decides the values that each bucket gets. In this case, um, the reason why these numbers are not even is it had to divide this up to 247 into five different buckets. So it had to make equal intervals for each of those buckets. So you can see that this this bucket has around, what, 46.6. Um, if you subtract the 60, the 14 from the 60.6, and the next one has the same range, so like the same the same width, if you were looking at it linearly. Uh, but there are other ways of breaking up the buckets. We can go through these one by one. Um, each time you do this, you have to, uh, I guess you don't always have to hit classify. It's a little confusing, actually, when, when you do and do not have to hit classify. So you can see in this case that the smallest bucket, the the bucket with the least number of rat sightings, rather, got significantly smaller. So it had 60-ish numbers in it, and now it has around 24. And when I hit apply, it's going to change the map significantly, even though the, um, the data has not changed. Um, just our way of looking at it has changed. And so what did it do differently here? It, it made the buckets bigger or smaller uh, to make the number of features that fall into those buckets equal. So there are five buckets. How do I divide the 50-ish um, city council districts so that there are roughly 10 uh, city council districts in each bucket? Okay. And I'm not going to go through all of these, actually. I kind of like natural breaks. I think it's pretty effective. Um, but this is how you do it in QGIS. And they also have their own little um, pretty breaks, which you may or may not like. OK, so that is the count. And you could totally uh, keep the rat sightings on top of it. You could tone down the rat sightings, the point features. So you could like bump up the transparency a lot and see, see both at the same time, kind of. Uh, but before we do that, I want to talk about a potential issue with these maps. Okay, so um, the the issue with doing this kind of map is that um, you need to think about the areas over which you're making this kind of map. Um, I haven't shown you how, how I made this data, but basically I used a function of QGIS that lets you count each feature within another feature. Um, in this case, I just got an absolute count of how many rat sightings were each in each city council district. But um, so as you can see, some of the city council districts, I mean, they, they're not all the same size, basically. This one clearly looks significantly bigger than this one, which in turn looks significantly bigger than this one. It is interesting that this smaller city council district also has a lot of the rat sightings. Um, but, but basically, these areas can distort um, can distort that a bit. So basically, this one has a lot of rat sightings in it, and it is also small. Um, but maybe there are bigger ones that also have... So basically, when we... When we map things this way, if we're just using the absolute count of rat sightings, 
if we view rat sightings as a bad thing, and I think most people probably do, um, we're, or even if you don't, for example, these these areas have not, they're not, they don't actually have that many rat sightings in them, but they look similar to this area, which has roughly the same number of rat sightings, even though this area is way smaller, this this part of the Upper West Side, right? So this, this area, anecdotally, it's like a quarter or a fifth the size of one of these, and they have the same number of rat sightings, but they look equally bad if you're looking at rat sightings as being a bad thing. Um, so one way to get around this problem, and this is a problem that happens with uh, with looking at things about a population in general, is you need to normalize that. You need to make it so that you're talking about uh, you're talking about this phenomenon in a consistent way. So often, what you're doing, what you want to do, is not just show the pure count, but you want to show it relative to the rest of the areas that you're talking about. Okay, so I'm not going to show you how to normalize that data in this video, that is a bigger topic, but I already did it for us, and you can actually, I'm going to leave this one open, and I'm going to open this one again, right? So I'm going to do that, and I'm going to go up, single symbol, graduated, and I'm going to go to relative density. Okay, and I'm going to pick the same one, the same color ramp, and natural breaks, I think. Okay, so when I do that, it creates five buckets, but you can see now that the numbers only go up to one. So, so now we're talking about basically relatively, um, this bucket has relatively more based on its area. I calculated the density by more or less dividing the number of rat sightings by the area. Okay, and when I hit apply, you'll see that, for instance, um, this area on the Upper West Side is a lot darker now than these parts of Staten Island, and I think that's much more accurate. Um, so we can kind of compare these these two, you see see how significantly it changes? They're using the same method of creating the buckets. If we open this back up, you can see that it's using natural breaks. And if we open this one up, they're both using natural breaks. Um, but when I hide the relative density one, you can see some of these areas look like they have much more rat sightings, and when I turn it back on, you can see that these areas all have roughly, they have the same density of rat sightings, whereas here they they look very different from each other, even though they are not. Okay. So you can see um, when we're looking just at the count, the count of rat sightings, as we are here, we see that these three city council districts look very similar because they all have similar counts of, of rat sightings. But these two are bigger than this one. So you see that they, they get toned down a bit when, um, when we turn the density back on. Okay, so um, so I hope that that helps make both uh, qualitative and quantitative maps with QGIS make a little bit more sense. Thanks.